Okay, we are live. I think I need to adjust this a little. Mimsy's. Yeah, you happy with that, Mimsy? Is that okay? You good? You good? Okay. Well, look at everyone's here. Dr. Obama, Luke, having a good old chat. Is it Dr. Obama? You're worried about the election results. Look, as I've always said all along, it isn't a foregone conclusion. It's just incredibly unlikely that the government will retain power. Um, I mean, it's almost a cliche to say this, but I found a significant chunk of the media reporting on this election very unreliable. And I'm, I don't even just mean like the murder press. I mean, I, I would hope it would go without saying, don't trust any shit that's in the murder press because they just fucking lie. But, you know, the ABC and uh, Fairfax Press and others seem to be given credence to some really um, ridiculous shit. Dr. Obama, I, I agree with you. La Labor advertising is more about, you know, a positive plan for the future and the Liberals are stuck on, ooh, Labor's scary. Now, again, I've said this before, but my genuine hope is um, for a really convincing uh, Labor win. And that is only partly uh, because of how funny that would be. Uh, uh, you know, I would take some glee in that. Uh, I'm just trying to get windows right. But um, I think for the good of the Liberal Party, uh, this needs to be a really convincing uh, Labor win. Um, much like with the Victorian ones where the Liberal Party ran an incredibly negative, incredibly racist campaign and Dan Andrews stuck to his guns and didn't bow to the pressure and Labor had a really convincing win. Um, I think this bullshit negativity and straight up lies of the Liberal Party needs to get smashed. Here's Justin Smash. Uh, big boy, Game of Thrones. Well, a lot of people who've stuck by the show. Amazing. I'm going to preface this with, uh, what are we up to? The, there's only like five uh, episodes. They're, they're doing like five movie length episodes uh, to finalize the story. And we've had four of them now. Uh, and uh, after, you know, they, they had the really big fight with the dead in the second episode. And I was slightly surprised that they ended that so soon. Um, but I was mostly okay with it. Um, I thought the com people were complete people were going, this is wrong, this is wrong. And honestly, they were getting on my fucking nerves. First, um, that I uh, didn't really agree with a lot of their complaints. But second, I just get the shits with people who've never created anything, ripping on people who create something that's very hard to create, uh, and making a big song and dance about it. Look, not liking something is fine. I've, I've got no problems with people not liking it. It's just uh, the fact that, you know, as, as I often say, the best thing about the internet is also the worst thing about the internet. Best thing is everyone has a voice. Uh, the worst thing is everyone has a voice. Um, yeah, and some people, mm, I'm not sure their, their voice needs to be heard. So I was getting really annoyed with all these people just losing their shit over. Oh, I hate what they're doing this game of shots. And I hate him. I hate the guys running it. I hate it. Right. But I swear to God, after tonight's episode, it was just shit that didn't make sense. And I'm like, oh, no, no. That's just, that was so arbitrary and didn't make any sense. And hadn't ugh, hadn't been established and it's just like nah 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 fuck that noise um 
I'm just like, no, this is this is not a, a, a satisfying ending. Oh, that's it. <sighs> Mitchell, does Labor have a death tax? Uh, no, Labor doesn't have a death tax. Uh, and um, I, I guess Liberal, I don't know if Labor is talking about uh, uh, having like an estate tax, namely that the estate of uh, some rich fucker who's dead um, pays some tax uh, before the worthless fucking uh, offspring get the money. Uh, but anyway, I don't, I don't even know about that. Big poor entities. Well, they passed where the books were two years ago and they've done... Uh, they were always going to change some stuff in the TV show. Like even from an early stage, they, uh, you know, they invented some characters, they left some characters out, they amalgamated some characters, they changed how some things happened. Often it didn't seem to make any sense or the change was suckier than what was in the book. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the, the way it is. But um, I think now... Uh, after like each week that goes by with this final season, people are getting louder and louder with their unappreciative noises. I think uh, there'd be quite a bit of shouting to George R.R. R. Mate Martin, can you finish the fucking books so we can see how you wanted it to end? It's really interesting because I'm pretty sure George R.R. R. Martin sort of signed a thing that said, you know, that thou shalt not talk shit about the TV show if the showrunners uh, uh, make a decision you don't like. And that is, in all honesty, uh, a reasonable thing, and I don't have a problem with it. Um, uh, but what started happening a couple of years ago is um, he, his agent was like acting like his proxy. George Martin wasn't uh, um, bad mouthing the show, but his agent would like, particularly uh, when they had uh, uh, Ramsey Bolton uh, violently rape Sansa Stark. That didn't happen in the books. Sansa escaped without that happening. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, his agent posted this stuff about how shit that was. That was shit treatment of Sansa. Um, so it remains to be seen if and when George Martinov finishes the books, um, which way his story goes. And hi, Gecko. That's okay, dude. Don't have to watch it. There are, there are too many shows to watch, quite honestly, and not everything's going to appeal to everyone. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's lots of stuff that people declare to be, you know, must see TV. Oh, I've seen classics, and I have not watched uh, at all. You know, there's just too many shows. Like I'm literally only just starting to watch Deadwood. That was on air like I don't know five years ago, and I'm just starting to watch it because there's a movie coming out that's supposed to wrap up the story, and I want to watch the series before that comes out. Um, Mitchell is Game of Thrones the most downloaded as in pirated TV show? Uh, I think it might be. Who knows? Don't know how you can actually track that. Speaking of shows, I watched a couple new ones on uh, Netflix on the weekend. A um, couple of new comedies on there. There's an animated series from the same people that made Bojack Horseman called um, Tuca and Birdie. And there's a lot of similar similarities with Bojack. Um, except it's it's considerably more whimsical than uh, Bojack. And is like in Bojack, there's humans and there's uh, anthropomorphized animals. Uh, Tuka and Birdie, they're both birds. Um, uh, and this world revolves around the um, animals uh, and humans are incredibly rare in it, but they also have uh, anthropomorphized plant people. 
uh, in this one. And I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a trite and shallow summary, but it's kind of like Bojack's for boys and Tuca and Birdie is for girls. Shirazi, um, Tuka and Birdie, I, I would agree with you in having a bit of trouble getting into it. I've watched three or four episodes. I think it's it's good. Uh, and um, But having trouble getting into it, I think, is a reasonable uh, assessment. Um, uh, and uh, I, I will keep watching it. Um, I enjoy it, um, but but yeah, I think it is actually a little different. And um, trying to get into its headspace is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, quite honestly, it's 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 more much more absurdist than BoJack Horseman, despite all the talking animals in BoJack. Uh, BoJack is much more uh, grounded in a sense of reality than Tuka and Birdie is. Uh, Tuka and Birdie's quite absurdist. Hey, Credit, and uh, hey, Shrazi, if I didn't say hello. And hey, really out of the Dragon Lady's Hitler. <laughs> That's what I think stupid, but anyway. Um, Justin, I haven't watched Designated Survivor. I know what you said. The premise is, yeah, everyone in the Congress is killed when the president's making a speech. And there's always one person who doesn't go there. They're called the designated survivor. In case there's a disaster, then they become president. And I think that's the premise. Correct me if I'm wrong. Bloodthirster. Hello there. Um, the other new comedy on uh, Netflix is a sketch, a really quite out there sketch series. I think it's called You Should Leave. Maybe You Should Leave. I think you should leave. Um, I started watching that because people had already been memeing it. So I wanted to know. I need to understand the memes. So I started watching it. And they're quite short episodes. Um, and the first episode is going, and I'm sort of like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like that level of funny. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But by the end of the first episode, I was uh, uh, getting quite some laughs out of it because um, it gets it gets really absurdist. If you like um, absurdist humour, you might like I Think You Should Leave um, because it is definitely absurdist. Catherine, you think I should be Taz, Tazzy Devil from Looney Tunes? There is a cartoonist friend of mine who draws me as a Tasmanian devil. I'm a bit cuter than the Looney Tunes Taz. Um, I've, I've shared those on, on the socials. Um, uh, yes, she she drew me as a Tasmanian devil and uh, Aidsy as a wombat. Uh, so we were anthropomorphized. That's really weird. Um, I'm assuming you can all see me normally um i can see me uh uh like on youtube i'm looking at the um hangout to see myself because the youtube stream's usually about 10 seconds lagged but when i look on youtube the screen's just black so i assume that's uh uh i think uh oh i'm, I'm assuming it's okay. dr Ryan, no it's not really like at monty python's flying circus at all but i get why you'd ask that uh, no, it's it's mo very modern American, so it's considerably more in your face with much more shouting than Monty Python. Not that Monty Python was scared of shouting, actually. Um, ah, Gecko, I love The Good Place. I reckon The Good Place is fantastic. Disenchantment, I never got into. I watched the whole series. Um, maybe it'll grow into something. I mean, technically it's well done, and, you know, I, I got more... It's one of those things when I was watching it, I did spend a bit of time going, oh, that's clever, that's clever. But I never actually laughed. I, like, literally, I didn't laugh once. Same as Final Space. A lot of people liked Final Space, another animated series on Netflix. And I watched the whole thing, 
and I enjoyed it. I was like, oh, that's interesting, but I never laughed. I honestly think Final Space got the balance of drama and comedy wrong and uh, never knew whether it was trying to be more serious or more funny. Catherine, definitely waiting for season four of The Good Place. I was going to be waiting for season four of um, Santa Clarita Diet, but they fucking cancelled it. Oh, so miffed. I love that show. Santa Clarita Diet was probably one of my favourite Netflix shows. And I was just like, no, how can you cancel it? Season three ended with such a good twist and really wanted to see what happened from that. Um, but uh, apparently no more unless they change their mind. And we all know that sort of thing happens. They change their mind about cancelling shows or a different um, network or streamer picks it up. But um, say la vie at the moment, uh, we just don't have it. Sarah, good morning to you. I'm doing quite well, thank you. Survived a Monday. I weirdly, I couldn't sleep. Well, I couldn't breathe. My nose was too congested, like sinus was too congested. And lying down, I couldn't breathe. I had to sit up. So I, I made myself a comfy, comfy little nest on the lounge, which is a really nice soft lounge that I have, a big one that I can lie down on. Um, one of the privileges of being a short ass, like if I was six foot something, I couldn't. Um, and I made a big nest of big cushions. And I was able to sleep because it's very soft and comfy, but I was on uh, like a 45 degree um, angle. So I found it easy to breathe. So I got some sleep. Justin, I, I will be doing uh, not the TV, uh, but I'll have, uh, I, I'll try and get the ABC live stream up. Uh, so I, I can track results because I will be in a different room to the TV because in the TV room, uh, Mrs. Angry will be flicking between the election uh, results and uh, um, what's it? Uh, Eurovision. She's a bit of a Euro Eurovision uh, fan. Look at these really neat. These are Mrs. Angry's um, bookmarks. They're like Prince of Watercolors. They're quite nice. There's that one. There's that one. Share if you want. Is that the same one? I think that's the same one. It's the same one. Ah, there's actually only two of them. There's two of each. Okay, fair enough. Dr. Obama, how many pairs of suspenders do I have? I have, I don't know. I, I don't wear much of them anymore. I don't change them much. In a previous job where I had to wear a tie, I used to match tie and suspenders. And I don't know, I've got a dozen or more pairs of suspenders. Okay, you want a mixed drink? I made vodka Vegemite. And yes, Shrazi, there is actually apparently a commercially released um, vodka infused Vegemite. But I made vodka infused Vegemite. And the official verdict is not good not good at all uh really not good um i have a friend josh over and we were uh trying to make it palatable um ended up making like a you know a veggie teeny a veggie mite vodka uh, martini and uh actually mixed with my absinthe vermouth it was okay, but it's it's a real problem when you know you're desperately trying to make a drink okay because it's awful otherwise. Uh, but yes, it's not good. Catherine, have you watching Supernatural? See, that's another one I've never got into, and that's like what well, that's more than ten seasons. I'm I'm not starting that now. That's way too much show. And there's way too many other shows, and you know I hear so many good things about. Um, uh, supernatural but there's just too much of it i haven't started it and dr obama i think you may be right sky news um while it might be funny to see them upset they will also just talk shit and lie and whatnot 
Oh, Sarah, I like Vegemite. I like Vegemite sandwiches. I like Vegemite on toast, um, which is why I tried Vegemite vodka, and it was just not good. Look, what will I be drinking on Saturday night? A little bit of everything. I should, okay, I've got to set myself the task between now and Saturday to uh, invent some election cocktails that I can make. I've got to come up with some election themed cocktails. Got one for the greens because I've got some um, herb infused uh, green spirits. So uh, the greens are easy because um, her herbal suits the greens as well. Um, but uh, s hopefully, when the lid gets smashed, I'll have something bitter to reflect their bitterness. Uh, Dr. Obama, yes, I saw the bookies odds. The most recent bookies odds were almost even money on labor and um, six to one against the Libs, which is why when I hear people go, oh, it's going to be close, the Libs could win. I go, well, you're partisan and trying to appear smart and all bookies care about is money. Um, bookies odds tend to be really dispassionate, not always right. And in fact, you know, if you were a regular gambler on the horsies, six to one would not even necessarily be particularly long odds. Uh, they're decent odds if you get a win, but they're not huge. Um, but yeah, when you see that big a difference, um, as a um, bookies don't put put um, any emotion into it. So, ugh. Sorry, Luke. Just the idea of a Clive Palmer cocktail just is gross. And just uh, okay. And then I'm almost being puritan here with Grazer. I, I I don't want to uh, make light of Clive Palmer or. One Nation or um, uh, Fraser Anning because they're fucking scum and making little jokey things about them is just feels too much like uh, indulging them and acting like they're not fucking scum. And they ask, oh, nice, Gecko, you hear a passenger... Who was Australian said he'd seen my videos. Nice. Dr. Obama, what's that mean we've got? ALP one point lib sus. I I I I don't understand the context. Catherine, that's a fine name for a beverage. Bitter defeat. A bitter's an absinthe. Hmm. Yeah, Fox, it's just, I just feel like if I was making light of Clive Palmer or One Nation or Fraser Annie, it's like treating them like they're just a joke and they're not. They're fucking reprehensible scum. Um, and it's just when I think of them, I can't think of anything but negativity uh, and just fuck them. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to. This gladiator just finished your own live stream. Nice. Hello to you. Oh, yeah, Shazi. Um, for those who missed it, yes, on uh, Fraser Anning has decided a little while ago to stop pretending anything apart from the fact he's an extreme racist. Uh, it's really fucking annoying that people are. Uh, um, Denard and both sides about him when he used na literal Nazi language in his Senate speech and, and the ridiculous fucking bullshit that, oh, he didn't know what he was saying. He literally knew exactly what he was saying and did it on purpose when he talked about a final solution. Um, you know, he, he made some statement about banning black immigration to Australia and then he actually used an old uh, 
uh, what were they called? Uh, there was a racist group in England in the 70s that ran an ad that uh, said something like, uh, if you want a black neighbour, just vote, uh, just, just vote. Sorry, if you want a black neighbour, just vote Labour. And Fraser Anning actually ran this thing on Facebook that said, if you want a Muslim neighbour, uh, just vote Labour. And despite the absolutely disgusting, inexcusable bigotry of that, uh, the, the picture he used uh, that he didn't have rights to was got taken from the media. It was a picture of a grieving family whose child had gone missing and to this day has never been found. Um, but he's such fucking reprehensible scum. He's just absolutely despicable. Like he's, he's literally debased public discourse in this country. And, you know, I didn't think anyone could make it worse than one nation, or for that matter, the fucking Liberal Party. Um, I didn't think anyone could make it worse, but he's managed to make it worse. He He's not even pretending. Like, you've got those um, Pauline Hanson billboards um, blatantly appealing to the racists saying, I'm not afraid to say what you're thinking, in as much as, come on, we're all racist on the inside, I'm just saying it. Uh, you know, that's your classic dog whistle racism. Um, Fraser Anning uh, just got the megaphone out and just went um, super fucking racist. Uh, like not even pretending to be anything apart from a disgusting, bigoted hate monger. Dr. Brummer, I didn't hear about anyone trying to burn down a Labour candidate's office. What a wacky world we live in. Yeah, I think, uh, I think any decent humans are putting uh, Fraser Anning last in this election. Uh, I just, ugh. And I swear to God, if any, like, okay, it's it's ninety nine percent likely that he won't get um, any. any bloody um, seats in this election, right? Uh, and that comes to pass if any fucking media hacks give him uh, a fucking airtime at all after the election, they're just the scum. I was just looking up the Labor candidate arson attack. ALP's candidate for Dawson. Fuel tank of her car was broken into. Wow, okay. Fancy that. Scumbags everywhere. Mitchell, can small parties win any more seats? Yes, I think some small parties and in independents are going to do quite well. Uh, the Greens may well pick up more. Hell, it, it, it's looking like the Greens are a chance in the previously extremely safe Liberal seat of Kuyong that actually has Josh Frydenberg in it. He'd be funny if he got knocked off. Um, I thought they were under threat from Labor, but what I was reading today is uh, his um, uh, under threat from the Greens is Julian Burnside. Now, I'm not the hugest fan of the Greens, but I am a fan of Julian Burnside as a person. He's a human rights lawyer. Um, he's a good man. And uh, man, I would celebrate so much if he uh, uh, took out um, Frydenberg in Kuyong. What? No, Fox of Fate Greens are small. They've only got 
like two or three seats in the whole country, if that. Um, but um, some independents stand a chance, particularly in some country seats. Um, I don't know if something like the Shooters and Fishers and Farmers Party uh, can replicate the success they had in the New South Wales election in any way. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, I think some independents will get in. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Nice blood thirster. Libs last, Clive Palmer second last. Good. But, um, yeah, I mean, yes, I'm going to um, take uh, some gloating time uh, when anyone high profile gets um, uh, knocked off in the election, uh, right at the top, it's Peter Dutton and Tony Abbott. Um, but if Frydenberg goes, that'd be a good one. And also uh, uh, Tim Wilson in my seat, if he gets knocked off, that'll be a big celebration. Don't know if there's anyone else high profile who's in the sights. Um, yeah, remains to be seen. But yes, if anyone uh, uh, really high profile gets knocked off, I'll have a bit of a laugh at their expense. Yeah, some of the Senate papers are supposedly like a metre long because there's so many goddamn parties on it. Oh, Justin, yeah, no, the look on Tony's face if he was... It would just, it would be priceless. It would be gold. If Abbott loses, it'd be so good. <laughs> Fox, walk in the polling place drinking water. I swear I'm also going to, uh, I'm going to get a T-shirt. There's a, a Facebook friend of mine, I started a movement he calls Yard, yelling at racist dogs. Um, and the Yard people are very big believers in free speech. And uh, the free speech they believe in is very loud speech, like particularly when any of those uh, high profile um, racist right wing scum fucks, particularly the international ones, when they do their tour trying to get money from the fucking racist fuckheads around this country, um, the yard people show up and express free speech. They don't try to shut down the event. They just yell at the racist dogs who are going into the events and they just go for it. I think it's hilarious. And they've become in the last six months quite well known to the fucking ultra right wingers. And it's like all they do, it's, you know, it's it's almost performance art. It's a pranking thing of um, uh, just going to one of these events, um, not trying to obstruct it in any way, just yelling abuse at the racist dogs and um so they've actually they've actually come to know what yard is um so a friend of mine uh went to check out one little racist get together uh it's not the last weekend or the weekend before and he had a yard t-shirt on and he wasn't even doing anything he was just going oh these fuckwits as bad as i think they are i was going oh yep they are and one of them with a megaphone spotted the yard t-shirt and started to lose his shit because they're actually really fucking uh, think so yeah yeah yes i know how i'm saying it dr obama y-a-r-d uh yelling at racist dogs so um now that i know uh milkshakes traumatize the fash and yard t-shirts traumatize the fash i'm definitely getting a yard t-shirt and the next big right-wing bullshit public thing, I'm going along and I'm going to wear a yard T-shirt and just have a strawberry milkshake in my hand. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to stand there and see how much they lose their shit um, just because I have a yard T-shirt and a strawberry milkshake. Worried about... Now we're all worried about... Um, uh, Democracy sausages. Just not even question who's better at covering elections, Anthony Green or Wolf Blitzer from CNN. Anthony Green's better than everyone.
Gecko a MAGA style hat, but a yard hat, it would probably be, uh, would, I suppose you could say, it could just say make Australia yard again. Um, I think uh, a play on it would actually be make racists afraid again. Um, it is a disturbing world we live in where blatant racists, white supremacists, fascists and Nazis parade in the streets because they're validated by, well, the most powerful uh, politician in the world, in Donald Trump, but also in all the um, media outlets uh, and other politicians as well. It's a uh, very disturbing. Ah, <laughs> Celeste, so you're a comedy channel, but you had to make a video commenting on the episode. That heard. Look, I was saying at the start, Celeste, I was actually really getting annoyed with uh, people who were ripping on this final season of Game of Thrones, saying, it's shit, they're doing anything wrong. And I was like, oh, if I can get your hand off it. So, but no, no, the tonight's episode, this most recent episode, I was just, I was like, no, this is bullshit. What the fuck? That, that is dumb as shit. And they can try and justify it as much as they like. Um, but no, nah, that King's Landing episode was just fucking shit. I was just like, really? Really? Fuck, oh, fuck, really? Okay, that was complete shit. Yep, agree. Tell us. I mean, yeah, thing with Danny not being Danny, they're, they're going to try and justify it like, no, she felt betrayed. She was paranoid. She knew everyone loved John and not her. She she sees everyone plotting against her. Oh, she says she, she thinks she's going to. Uh, credit, no spoilers. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to say, okay, let's not say anything direct about tonight's episode. Previous episodes, fine. And I think we can also do... Um, I think it's safe to do uh, uh, end game spoilers now uh, as well. But uh, yeah, credit. I mean, I guess it is a bit of a spoiler to say that episode was just shit. So um, Dr. Obama, no, that's our gecko. You can't really be very interested in seeing Endgame if you haven't seen it yet. Dr. Obama, see, that's not a spoiler. There was no sex. Uh, I, was, I have to admit, Game of Thrones is one of the shows that I love the um, advisory before each episode, like, What's going to be in tonight's episode? Is it sex? Is it violence? Uh, what's, you know, is it themes? Is it violence? Is what? Yeah. And Jeremy, yes, it was shit. It was, it was just shit. Gecko, I understand the needing to pay rent, but I also don't know how you could have possibly avoided endgame spoilers yet. Ah, uh, no, Celis, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Well, Justin, I, I get what you're saying about John Howard and Tony Abbott. Asked Tony why he's campaigning with a pedophile defender. Tony's a pedophile defender as well. Yeah, Mitchell, it's the last episode of Game of Thrones, but seriously, I, I thought everyone who was making a big song and dance about the first couple of episodes was being a tad precious and a tad painful even. But after this week's episode, I'm just like, oh, who fucking cares? Seriously? Oh, and there's one, and they did it in this episode again, but they did it in the fight with the Army of the Dead episode. They drag out the tension moment way too much. Way, way, way too much. Um like when there's, there's like the final moment in with the army of the dead when everyone's in trouble and it's like, okay, you've set it up so this is it. Either 
they're going to kill the Night King or everyone else is going to die. And they dragged out this thing like, everyone's in terrible trouble. I don't know, like felt like 10 fucking minutes or something. And I was like, oh, come on. Just do the fucking resolution already. For fuck's sake. This is just getting annoying. And um, it's just like, God damn. So, yeah, I don't know. I think everyone just now wants George Martin to finish the book so we can see how he wanted to do it. Um, I did see a very, uh, yeah, Celis, that was it, waiting for the bell, the bells ringing. That, that was the moment that it was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, you're doing this again? You're dragging it out again? Fuck me. And it's just like, shit, honestly. It's, it's, it's just bad writing. It's like manipulating the audience. Um, uh, and it's just shit writing. Um, but... Um, yeah, no, no, they, they definitely lost me with that. Uh, <laughs> Luke, you want to see Detective Pikachu? Um, my kids went and saw it um, with their mum on Mother's Day. And they kind of said, as if the, my daughter said the, the pacing was a bit off, but it was a fun movie. Um, um, I mean, yeah, I probably want to see that too. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, in fact, quite sure I won't see it in the cinema. I'm not that keen to see it. Um, I did see a funny story, apparently, you know, with Ryan Reynolds doing the Pikachu voice. There's so much swearing in the outtakes. Uh, they were saying, like, they could, they could do a whole different ver version that would be R-rated with um, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds' as Detective Pikachu just swearing all the time. And, you know... That, that has uh, some potential, quite honestly. Oh, yeah. Gecko, what the fuck is with the Sonic trailer? Um, that was weird as hell. Like that just astonishingly badly designed Sonic. I was like, who the fuck? That's like designed by committee. There's like no artistic vision in that. Um, I saw that taken apart by very clever people and why, you know, here's why this is wrong. Um, and they said, they since said uh, they're going to redesign it. Yeah. So there's a thing with a CG character, you can do that. Um, what was I saying about uh, Game of Thrones? I saw someone do a very good involved thread on Twitter explaining uh, the difference um, uh, was, uh, um, what do they call them? Plotters and pantsers. A plotter is someone who plots everything out. They, um, you know, They'll, they'll do um, scene cards and whatnot, and they're all about plot. Everything gets driven by plot and story. And sometimes when someone's too obsessed with plot, the characters aren't that well developed. The characters only exist to uh, service the plot, and they'll often do things that don't make sense. And uh, the other one are pantsers. That's people who fly by the seat of the pants. They just tap, tap, tap away, right away, right away, and they, they carries them where they want. And, you know, the characters will run all over. And George Martin is a pantser, and the people running the TV shows are plotters. And particularly um, in the last two years, this person argued, they've gone like, okay, we are going to finish here, and we need this plot point, this plot point, this plot point, this plot point. So they just pushed the characters and said, well, you're going to be there, so we um, need this plot element to happen. Uh, and um, so people who are more in love with characters get annoyed that the plot drives things, not the characters. Is it What was interesting, the person who was deconstructing this um, was saying uh, neither's good or bad, 
they're just different and they will feel different. And yeah, if you get a plotter take over the work of a pantser or vice versa, it will all go fucking to hell. Um, and, um, you know, that is to a large extent what's happening with Game of Thrones. So, yeah. Oh, Bloodthirst to that live action Aladdin remake. I have zero interest in any of these Disney live action or CG remakes. I mean, uh, you know, they've done Beauty and the Beast and, you know, now we've got Aladdin and the Lion King and Dumbo and fuck knows what else they're talking about. Uh, I'm not, I just have no, I'm not saying I hate them. I, I just have no interest. Dirk, how you doing, mate? But yes, it's a, it, it's a, yeah, that's right. Bloodthirsty, they're doing Milan as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not interested in all at anything. Ah, oh, Catherine, you saw the Aladdin stage show. I think if you like those live theater, those Disney stage shows, whether it's the actual theater version, like with Aladdin uh, or those Disney on ice things. I think if you like those sorts of things, they're a very good spectacle. Um, yeah, they're, they're, again, they're just not my thing. <laughs> Gecko, you want a live action remake of Titan AE? Um, that was okay. For those who don't know, that was an animated film. I think it was a Warner Brothers animated film, which was okay and probably deserved to do better than it did. Turkey hunched over a laptop. That's okay. <laughs> Dr. Obama, I didn't hear that. John Houston got banned from the Liberal Party for endorsing the Greens, Sarah Hansen Young. So they, well, they did disendorse one candidate because they run candidates on all these seats where the person's just not going to win. And so this guy's arbitrarily in a very safe Labour seat. And uh, media says to him, what do you think of your Labour opponent? And he just, he's, he's a great bloke. He's awesome. I think he's great. <laughs> he got disendorsed for being too nice to his competitor. Bloodthirsted, yes. Disney are trying to cash in. Now all the millennials have kids. The millennials want, they use their kids as an excuse to see remakes of these animations they grew up with. Gecko still haven't watched Ready Player One. It's, it's still not on any streaming service I have. I was talking about, okay, Dirk, you, you go to see Train Your Dragon. This, I think I only saw the first one. This must be quite good. I'll tell you what, talking about if you want to do a, a live action recreation of an animation, the Iron Giant, that would be great. The Iron Giant is one of my all time favorite animations. Um, and it was never promoted, like the studio didn't know what to do with it because it was basically an anti gun kids movie. Um, but it was fucking great and it was so emotional. And it was, it was just beautifully structured. It was, it was just a great, fun kids animation. But the, someone who likes writing, uh, it's so beautifully structured with cause and effect and callbacks. And my personal favorite, and you know, just about brings me to tears every time, even now, like years later, there's an early bit when the kid first finds this giant robot and he's trying to communicate with it. And the robot's slowly understanding his language and um, their friends and the robot goes to follow, he, the kid finds the robot out in the forest and um, the robot tries to follow him back and the kid knows people will freak out if they see it. So he's got to keep it secret. And so he's explaining to the robot, no, no, I go, you stay, no following. And then right at the end when a crazy person fires uh, a nuke uh, at the town where the Iron Giant is. And the kid's explaining to the giant, everyone's going to die. Um, 
Oh, and there was a, a, another callback. The the kid loves comics, and he has this comic about an evil robot called Metallo, and he wants to play with the robot where the robot's Metallo and evil. And the robot says, I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be Metallo. Um, I want to be here. I want to be Superman. And then right at the end when the kid says the nuke's going to kill everyone, the robot, which can fly, just flies like the nuke's gone up into the upper atmosphere and is about to come down, and the robot flies up and basically um, collides with the nuke to detonate it in the upper atmosphere where it won't hurt it. And But before he goes and uh, the kid's saying well, we're all fucked and the robot knows what to do, and the robot just says to him what the kid had said to him earlier is like, I go, you stay, no following. And the kid's heartbroken because the robot's going to die. It's going to fucking headbutt a nuke. And um, it does it. It goes off. And just as it's coming up to the nuke, the robot closes its eyes and goes Superman and just... <laughs> and... Um, so full on. Yes, Dr. Obama, I'm doing spoilers for a 20-year-old movie. I have been abused by that before. So I talked about something as like, you know, a movie that was bizarrely old. Someone was going to spoil this, and I'm like, I'll get fucked. Yes, it's bizarre, Shrazi. Iron Giant and Groot are so alike. Um, Vin Diesel does the voice for both, and the Iron Giant only has very few lines of dialogue and of course all Groot says is Iron Groot but yes oh Dirk killing the dog in I Am Legend that's that's really full on that's again I reckon that's an underrated movie there is a lot of really good stuff in that um although it's it's weird because if you get uh like um disc or digital you, you need to get one that has the alternate ending which is the real ending um which apparently did not test well with audiences so this is bizarre to me the ending that happens is um uh will smith sacrifices himself he dies so other people get away and he kills the monsters but that gets rid of the central thing the thing is i am legend this guy the, the narrator of the story he is legend to these things he thinks these albino mutants are mindless monsters that have lost all their humanity but they haven't they they actually have a society they have bonds between each other and um uh, he's been vivisecting them and doing experiments on them because he thinks they're not human anymore. And then right at the end, he actually realises that they they still feel, they're still sentient, they're still sapient, and he's been vivisecting them and doing experiments on them, and he realises he's the monster. Like, they probably tell their kids bedtime stories of uh go <laughs> be good or the scary man will get you and he in the alternate ending which is the real ending he actually understands that they understand and um he understands what he is that he's the monster and he lets the the uh, mutants go and that apparently tested really bad and what that said to me is the audiences would rather see their hero die than be wrong because the real weight of that ending is he's wrong. He's been wrong and he's not just been wrong, he's been evil. He's been vivisecting and performing experiments on these mutants and they feel it and he's like, and he's the monster. And so apparently the test audiences preferred the hero to be dead than to be wrong. It was really weird. Gecko, I Am Legend was a sci-fi short story, and I think a version was made either for TV or cinema. 
which was called I Am Legend. And then there's an old Charlton Heston movie called Omega Man, which is the same story. Um, so I Am Legend's kind of a remake of Omega Man, but it's basically a redoing of the original story, I Am Legend. So, yeah. Shiraz, yes, when the main protagonist is a bad guy. I, and, okay, here's why I love video games, because I think video games can have uh, um, more uh, nuance than a movie and twist, and because you can play different endings in video games, of course. And I have seen people speculate on, uh, it would be fun if you had a game whereas, you know, it's huge battle, whatever the scale was, the stakes were really high and you're fighting against the odds. And in order to attain your goal, to advance, you have to make more and more questionable decisions. And uh, like you have to kill innocents to advance your goal and your decisions get worse and worse as you go along until at the end you actually realize you're the bad guy you actually realize you've become the tyrant and the people you're exterminating are freedom fighters is that what dirk is that what happens in mass effect i don't know mass effect i know yeah i know we I, i'm trying to be ready player one and I think the way uh, Iron Giant is represented in Ready Player One pissed off a lot of people because he is just a weapon in Ready Player One, whereas the whole purpose of the movie, the Iron Giant, is it was anti-gun. That was his big line, I am not a gun. Um, so the way he's used in Ready Player One pissed off a lot of people. Uh <laughs> Luke, you're a, you're a worry. It's the halfway mark. Should I be making a say? I always feel weird about doing that on a Monday night. I don't know why Monday is different to a Tuesday. Or a Thursday or Friday. Or Saturday. Well, actually, because it's a work night. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want to make a cocktail. I'll have to think about it. Um, sorry, look, I did see you say that old Will Smith movie, Seven Pounds. I think I did see... No, I didn't see that. Will Smith's made a bunch of weird films, though. Um, uh, um, oh, Mimsy's joining us again. She probably wants to scritch, don't you? I poked you in the nose. I'm sorry. Um, Trying to think, oh, I guess a variation of that idea I had, and what gave me the idea, the, the game that's been sort of teased and hyped for a while, uh, Death Stranding, uh, as that, that Japanese um, game developer behind it, um, that just looks super weird, and I don't think anyone knows how the game plays yet. There's just been um, teasers. Uh, and um, it looks like there's really weird aliens and shit in it. And the guy Daryl from The Walking Dead is um, the main character. In, well, it's not Daryl; it's the, the same actor. Um, is the they've done the motion capture and voice thing. Uh, and uh, um, it, I'm sure this is what put the idea in my head. The I imagine this sci-fi game where, you know, like say, you know, you crash land on some alien planet and there are these weird alien monsters who like attack you and you, you have to kill them. And it's a really hostile environment and the upgrades that you get and things, you find bits of, you know, you have science stuff and you find a way to alter yourself to uh, a climate to the harsh conditions on these planets, 
like you know maybe you put gills in your neck to filter this air and um you extend your arms so you can climb things maybe get a prehensile tail swinging and you basically as the game progresses your upgrades for new skills uh uh physical augmentation of your body and so you end up with all these extra capabilities that let you explore new areas and you change your body more and more and more and then like right at the end of the game another ship crash lands and humans come out and see you and freak out and start shooting at you and you realize you've gradually changed yourself so much you've become one of these weird freako mutant monsters that you killed when you first landed on the planet Ooh, that's my deep and meaningful thought eden monaro eden monaro is a seat uh in the act that i'm not sure if it still holds this record but in almost every election if not every single election since federation uh uh whoever has won the seat of eden monero has won the election i actually think um there was one recent election like one in the last 10 years where that didn't happen i did see someone see, do a shot when they talk in Monaro, dr barma that's alcohol poisoning right there tell us does anyone believe in ghosts or aliens Ooh, look not to shit on anyone who maybe does um but the ubiquity of recording devices both surveillance cameras and um phones and whatnot prove beyond any doubt aliens don't exist ghosts don't exist the like mess monster doesn't exist bigfoot doesn't exist sasquatch doesn't exist none of these things exist because there is literally no way possible they wouldn't have been recorded if they existed um now see this but i think you can have a discussion about things i think there are things that are basically beyond human understanding and the idea that we as humans know everything is incredibly arrogant and wrong uh but by this it's, it's really weird i think that's a really difficult conversation to have because i really don't like indulging in woo -woo, uh, mysticism um, but at the same time saying that humans know everything um, is really conceited yes there's a couple of people gecko and timmy saying um, alien life could exist just uh, we haven't seen i i agree and i will say uh, with an unimaginably vast universe the idea that we are the only intelligent life is incredibly vain it's not impossible we may be utterly unique in the uncountable billions and billions and billions of planets around the billions and billions and billions of stars we may be absolutely uh unique I don't think that's likely but uh i feel quite confident in saying every single person who says they've seen a ufo or an alien was just one of the following they're, they're just wrong they were mistaken they saw something that could be easily explained and they misinterpreted it uh two they're lying they know they're lying they're just making shit up and i think that's where most of them fall i think most of them are just charlatans people who want attention who are just lying and the third possibility is they have a, a pretty significant delusional disorder which makes them think it happened um it's it's a, like some sort of dissociative disorder that um makes them believe that it happened but i am one million percent convinced that every single person 
who says they've seen an alien spaceship or an alien is wrong. That didn't happen. Same as every single person who says they saw a ghost, that that didn't happen. Oh, Luke, yes, clairvoyance, people who speak to the dead, complete charlatans. Those people are just evil fucking charlatans. People who say they talk to the dead are evil, lying charlatans. Here's the thing, Charles. That's the thing. Our, I think you hit on a point that there can be dimensions of existence that humans can't uh, perceive. And this is, why, this is why I think it's very difficult to have this conversation because I am actually um, willing to uh, acknowledge the limits of my understanding of things. And those limits are pretty extreme. Uh, uh, and even just like we know there are some animals that have completely different sight senses and you know from like you know we have the three rods that let us see color and like you know dogs have two so that they, they don't see the color range we have but there are some creatures that have six eight ten of these rods what the fuck are they seeing that we don't see and like sharks feel electrical fields um and they're not the only ones so there are doors of perception that are closed to us um uh and this was to say this is why this conversation is um very difficult to have sellers i agree life is weird life is weird anyone who thinks they have all the answers is full of shit uh uh, life is very, very, very weird. You see, David, your UFO was a Foxbat light aircraft operated out of a particular thing that was painted here. So this thing, again, people sometimes get pedantic when I say this. They go, oh, UFO, technically, if you didn't identify it, it's definitely a UFO. That's why I started saying alien spaceship instead of UFO. Because UFO literally just means unidentified flying object. So if there's something in the sky or picked up in radar, and you can't identify it, it's a UFO. But you know, anyone who says they've seen an alien spaceship or an alien is talking shit. Um, but uh, look, by, by the same token, like um, I remember, and like ghost stories, I, I don't want to kill the fun, like ghost stories around a campfire. How fun is that? I remember when I was at, at, at uni, um, which is was, was in Bathurst, which is across the mountains west of Sydney. Um, I was I did a theatre course there, and I was working um, uh, front of house um, uh, with a friend, and while the play was on. We had to stay in the front of the house. We had the lights on really low, so it was just really dim light so you could see out. And there was a storm outside. The wind was whipping around, and there was this quite howling wind and noise. And for whatever fucking reason, we started telling each other ghost stories. This town of Bathurst has a lot of uh, ghost stories about it because it has a violent history. It was a mining town. Uh... Uh, a lot of people murdered. A lot of people we knew were quite convinced they'd lived in haunted houses. They had presences in houses. And we'd heard all these stories. And so in this really dim light with this wind howling outside, just the two of us, and we could only whisper because we couldn't disrupt what was happening in the theatre. And we're just whispering, telling each other ghost stories. And neither of us actually believed in ghosts. But after 10 or 15 minutes of that, we were both kind of looking over our shoulders as we said it. So I don't want to kill fun like that. But Oh, I sure answer, yes, IQ is bullshit. I agree. Um, literally all IQ measures is how well you do on an IQ test. IQ tests are culturally biased. Uh, they do nothing to tell you 
how someone might apply their brain to something like as in how practical they could ever do anything um and uh yeah iq tests are pretty much meaningless um oh celeste different senses of perception but there are the synesthesia i listened to an interview um i was listening to a podcast andrew denton's interviews are on podcast form and he had an interview with uh daniel johns the lead singer of silverchair who is an interesting if uh troubled dude and what was interesting to me in the course of the interview it became clear uh daniel johns uh, has synesthesia um, and what that is that's people whose senses work in a different way um, uh, in Daniel Johns's case he sees sound he sees music some people smell colors um, uh, some yeah, it's basically like that it's basically a different set of senses and what the studies have shown is um, uh that uh the people with synesthesia aren't faking it they aren't making it up they genuinely um uh smell color they genuinely see sound and music because it's it's consistent their perceptions are consistent and daniel johns sees music is absolutely and that's how he makes music because he sees the vibrations and he changes them until he likes how they look it was fascinating Timmy, what do I mean by cultural bias? I mean, IQ tests are based on the dominant education system in the culture in which they exist. So somebody who went through a different education system in a different culture is likely to do poorly on the IQ test compared to someone who's from that culture, who went through that education system. And that's why IQ tests are a terrible indicator of intelligence. They're also, they're, they're a terrible indicator of what worth you may have as a person. You get absolute fucking shithole scumbags like white supremacist Stefan Molyneux, who worships um, IQ tests and he spouts the most ridiculous bullshit about how they're perfect and infallible and prove that white people are better than black people. Um, but uh, literally the only thing an IQ test measures is how well you did on that IQ test. And is it, there's a massive cultural bias in them uh, it, they're based on a lot of assumed knowledge and that knowledge is different from culture to culture. So uh, uh, IQ tests are actually worse than useless in as much as uh, they give you a false indicator of something. It's just like, they're absolutely useless. Like, it's like, Okay, and most people who get uh, very high scores, and I, I only say most, um, most people who get very high scores on IQ tests come across as intelligent to almost everybody. But that's not a measure of how useful that person is. Will that person ever create something with that intelligence? Will they ever discover something with that intelligence? Will they ever help anyone with that intelligence? Uh, I, IQ tests in and of themselves are absolutely worse than useless. Um, and yes, people who worship them, the dodge Oh, Justin, um, the, the concept of employers using IQ tests or psychometric tests they're fucked. I worked in a place years ago that was trying to um, convert some classical 
psychometric testing to online tests that can be used in employment. And so I, I, I got to know them really well and they're really fucked. They're really bad. Um, I've, I've never been asked to do one for a job, but I think if I rocked up for a job and they said, we want to do this psychometric testing on you, I'd be like, fuck off, not working with you. Big tell is there an accurate way to measure someone's intelligence? No, because we can't even define what intelligence is. And you need to be honest about what you're trying to uh, achieve. I mean, you, 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 do, you, do, you do get some people, what's the term, polymath? Be, you know, they might know everything about physics and really advanced mathematics and they can write a symphony and uh, write be beautiful poetry and paint. Like, you know, they have all these skills, you know. Um, and you get some people who are very narrowly focused and can't really do much outside of uh, that. So that's what do I think what happens when you die. Uh, wasn't there was a cute video I saw um, online um, it was uh, Keanu Reeves talking to Stephen Colbert on his late night show. And because, you know, Keanu is a fairly zen kind of guy. And Stephen Colbert says, what do you think happens when you die? And he said, uh, I think the people you left behind are sad. Uh, <laughs> which, which that would be a universal truth, no matter what happens after death. Um it remains true that people you leave behind uh, die. Personally, uh, I think the reason we invent afterlives and reincarnation and the idea of something is because the idea of non-existence is terrifying. Because when you really think about it, you think about non-existence. That's fucking awful. Is absolutely fucking awful. And everyone wants to think there, there's got to be more to it than this. We can't just be this random collection of cells that wanders around on the surface of this mud ball for however long and then disappears back into the dirt. There's got to, I don't think there is. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't think there is. I don't think there is more than that. So I'm always a thing. So make as positive an impression on this planet as you can while you're here because you're not here for long. Uh, um, so, um, try and make things better, not just for yourself, but for other things. That's the thing, Shrazi. That's the thing a lot of people don't wrap their head around, your lack of existence before you were born. What is that? And see, there are certain things that are beyond human comprehension understanding what non-existence means so you know two people fucked and a sperm got into an egg and fertilized it and the egg divided the cells divided and it grew a complete fucking person and then you existed what the fuck is that about that's wild what the fuck what the fuck is that about and um, I mean, the, the heavy discussion, I think, just in the last live stream is uh, humans don't really understand time. I know there are some scientists who are really fucking in there with multidimensional space and time and whatnot, and they've kind of got their head wrapped around it. But this human idea of linear time I believe the prevailing scientific thought at the moment is, no, it isn't. Uh, humans aren't able to perceive their movement through time because everything always feels like now. You know, now. I, last time I said now, I thought it was now, but it's not now. That's an, and just like... And um, there are certain things that are just beyond most humans. Shaz, you raise a good point understanding 13 billion years is in real terms beyond human comprehension. 
That's the thing, Celeste. Something always was. I, I believe the dominant theory for people who explore that at the moment is time's not linear. Time is cyclical. Um, and the shape of the universe is a torus, which is basically a donut. And it, it, it's a cyclical thing. The Big Bang expands out and then collapses back in to a singularity and then it happens again. And it's, it's a cycle. And that concept of time and the idea that something always was, uh, what that means is basically that common human understanding of linear time, things have a beginning and an end, is not accurate. It's, ha it's, it's, for, most of it, it's for most of us, it's the limit of our perception but that perception is flawed. So yeah, Dr. Bar, my, my stance on pro-life by choice, I am pro-choice. Uh, the idea of banning abortion is fucking farcical uh, and horrific and awful. And I keep trying to do the right research on how horrific the anti-abortion movement's getting in the US and the laws that are being passed uh, that are fucking psycho and they're just awful. So this is a good way of thinking. Think about time, could be dead, alive, not born. And again, it's, it's about perception. Um, and in fact, they even had a little bit of fun with that on uh, Avengers Endgame. How would time travel work? You can't change your present because if you go into the past, it's your future and uh, you can change what happens. You can do something in the past that will change what happens from now on, but what you do in the past won't change what has already happened. Uh, <laughs> they're messing with it. Timmy, I think abortion should be safe, legal, on demand, always available. Fuck that concept of rare. It should be if the idea for this woman of carrying a pregnancy to term is a bad idea, then end that, okay? There is all the anti-abortion arguments are fucking horseshit. Uh, the woo-woo metaphysical bullshit uh, when they're not complete and utter lies. Like this fixation with late-term abortions, which is a thing that literally does not exist okay the only time there's a medical intervention at the late stage of uh pregnancy is when the pregnancy is not viable when uh either it will kill the mother or uh the unborn child will not survive or both okay the concept that a woman goes all the way through pregnancy goes through all of that and right at the end on a whim says i don't want this whack it out that literally does not happen not ever anyone who says it does is a disgusting worthless fucking lying piece of shit that needs to have the fucking shit kicked out of like the absolutely despicable Fucking lies Trump's been pushing. Saying, oh, you know, women have babies and they sit there with the doctor deciding whether or not they're going to murder the baby after it's born. I swear to fucking God of every vile thing that unconscionable festering pile of fucking garbage has ever done, that's right up there with the fucking worst. I mean, that is just beyond despicable. I fucking hate that so much. So that's wherever I travel. I am actually not that well traveled, um, which I regret immensely. Really only traveled to the US, um, the UK, England, uh, and uh, the Philippines. I had a one night stopover in Japan on a trip, so I could technically say I've been to Japan. Um, but uh, I am not that well traveled, which is something really great. In fact, if I could do this, one of my really big regrets in life, I could have uh, traveled to China 
before all the massive redevelopment of the last 20, um, 30 years, uh, seen like the old cities and whatnot, which have gone forever now. Um, I could have done that and I didn't and they're gone forever now. And that is one of my really big regrets in relation to travel. Um, if I could tell like 20, 25 year old me, no, do whatever you have to fucking scrape together this, scrape together the money, you know, rob some banks, whatever, get some money and do this because this will be gone and you'll never see it again. Uh, and um, yeah, that's probably one of my single biggest regrets with regard to travel I didn't do. All right, Natalie Kirk, you're absolutely right. Um, the way Trump just casually spouts those lies is going to get people killed. You are right, Celis. I mean, I think I can send those, you know, we don't know what time is and how many dimensions there are, the multiverse theory. Um, maybe these really strong uh, thoughts I'm sending back will... Uh, reach one of the timelines and go, Timmy, how will people get killed? Natalie is referring to specific people. Dr. George Tiller was a doctor who was murdered by uh, anti-abortion activist who he was actually just an anti-woman activist who was motivated by the type of talk Trump says. There are the anti-abortion uh, agitators a lot of them actively advocate for violence against abortion providers. And uh, there have been many attacks, uh, several successful murders of people who work with abortion providers. So what Natalie's talking about is actual things that have actually happened. Uh, and the lies uh, and fucking evil of Trump and the slavering fucking idiots who follow him uh, will definitely get people killed. Oh my God, Gekko, I remember that song. Calling occupants of interplanetary craft. But um, that was a real 70s number, if I remember rightly. That was... <laughs> Sorry, so I'm sure that's on YouTube. Um, every time I think of some weird, obscure bit of music from the past. I think it's probably on YouTube and it always is. Um, but um, oh my God, I think the high point for me, like my uh, uh, older siblings, was you had think like they're less of a thing these days, but there's this thing in the 70s and into the 80s with these K till 20 great hits and then there'd be the Goofy greats, the wacky songs, and I, I just had this vague memory of a song called Moldy Old Doe, and I, and all I could remember is that Moldy Old Doe, and I thought I bet that's on YouTube. I could look it up. I looked up and it was, and it was so much better than I could have imagined. Moldy Old Doe. That's literally the only lyric in it. Moldy Old, but. It's this really weird hippie acid trip thing. They're all dressed up like uh, very low rent Lord of the Rings cosplayers. There's this bit where they play Tin Whistle and they're dancing around. Look it up. It's fucking brilliant. Moldy old dough. It's on, you know, Environmental Coffee House. Good day to you. Luke, sorry, you've asked me that before. Will there be three streams? Almost definitely, because Saturday will be an extra stream. Um, so there will almost definitely be one on Thursday. I'm doing tonight's stream rather than Tuesday night because as regular viewers will guess, I'm going to the physio because uh, my shoulder's fucked. There's no, how fucked is my shoulder? Like I have shrugged and um, then collapsed in horrible pain. Like I was taking a jacket off. You know how you shrug your shoulders? I, I, that was a stupid thing to do. I could have hurt myself just doing that. I basically shrugged out of a jacket and this shoulder, it's like someone had just stabbed me in the shoulder and I basically just collapsed, went down my knees, which is not good because my knees are fucked 
as well. Oh my God, I'm so old. My body's falling apart. Oh yes, the fish head, roly poly fish head song. Um, Justin, do I think it's right to put process restrictions around abortion, please? Yes, because the people who do those protests are the scum of the fucking earth who harass and violate the personal space of people who are already having one of the worst days of their life. Uh, I would gleefully take to those fucking people with a flamethrower. Fuck not letting them protest. So let them come out and then I'll go them with a fucking flamethrower. Those people are the scum of the fucking earth and I despise them. No, we, we is now increasingly a law in Australia that um, uh, you're not allowed to protest within however many hundred metres of a clinic and that's a fucking great law. Big tell. What I think of chiropractors, chiro oh, look. chiropractors are fucking shysters. I went to a chiropractor a while back and I felt like the best advice he ever gave me was to get a different pillow, one of these contour pillows. They definitely have helped. But then he was trying to get me by the shoes. So at a certain point, it's just like wanting you to um, spend more money. And the other thing is, the overwhelming majority of chiropractors are anti-vaxxers. So fuck them. Timmy, good night. Thank you for dropping by. I'm trying to think, what are the other weird songs? Oh, weird songs I remember from my youth, like my dad or my older siblings had uh, the records. See you, Dr. Obama. Thanks for dropping by. Um, it was one called Rugby Racing and Beer, which is about New Zealand. Because all they think about in New Zealand is rugby, racing, and beer. That's hilarious. And I remember this other one was about a, a footballer who played for the St. George Football um, Club. His name was Graham Langlands, and his nickname was Chang or Changa. Um, and I remember there was a like a novelty song, tribute song to him called Chang the Magic Dragon. And I looked that up once on YouTube. I said, but it's on YouTube and it was, and it was on YouTube. But it was sung by Jimmy Hannon, who was an absolute legend of Australian TV uh, in the 60s and 70s. Um, and he actually died just recently. But there was a weird thing. I remembered the song, Chang the Magic Dragon. And I looked up on YouTube. I didn't remember Jimmy Hannon was the person who sung it. And Jimmy Hannon was like everywhere on Australian TV in the 60s and 70s. Um, Holden Cars and Meat Pies, that was just an ad, Luke. Football, meat car, kangaroos and Holden Cars. That that was just an ad, but I bet that's on YouTube as well. I think a full-scale song was like, what's the one I looked up the other day? The Idi Min song, Amazing Man, which is, you know, hilarious, you know. Let's um, make a novelty song about a despotic, murderous dictator. <laughs> Let's make a joke song about him. Idi Amin, most amazing man the world has seen. Yet the general, the president, the king had seen. Idi, Idi, Idi Amin. Gecko, Robin Williams in Don't Worry, Be Happy. Yeah. I had a whole thing where I ranted about how bad the song Don't Worry, Be Happy was. Justin, do I know the story of why New Zealand never became an Australian state? Because New Zealand didn't want it, I imagine. What, what what's the story from your perspective? I'd, I'd be interested. It's not something I've looked into. Fox has fade off. No more fucks to give. That sounds more recent than what I'm talking. About. I'm talking about weird old things like Ahab the Arab or Guitar Zan. These are one of these weird K Tel albums in the 70s and early 80s. Um, so strange. Hey, Miss Foxification. In for the last 20 minutes. Nice to see you. Um, Try to think, oh, my God, that was such a weird thing. Uh, oh, like, hello, mother, hello, father. Here I am at Camp Granada. Ooh, Celis. Um, Yes, please, look, send me uh, a link on the socials or something. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, because uh, I normally do ranty videos, and I'm thinking of doing rant because... It's weird because I was initially annoyed at the people who were just 
full-scale um, uh, ragging on this season of Game of Thrones, but fuck it, after this week's episode. God damn. That's it, Natalie Kirk. <laughs> they used it in The Simpsons. Marge is laser at Camp Granada, <clears throat> which is a, a, a very, it's a very funny song. It's this weird, is a kid complaining to his parents about the, is it a big American thing, sending kids to summer camp? That was not really a thing in Australia. Um, there's a thing in America because they have that stupidly long summer break from school, fucking three months. We get six weeks. They get three months. Um and it's just these great lines, you know, yes, they say, well, that's some fun if it stops raining. And you remember Jeffrey Hardy, they're about to organise a searching party. The head coach wants no sissy, so he reads to us from something called Ulysses. And he hates it. He's going, the whole song is um, how much he's writing a letter to his parents, how much he hates Camp, Camp Granada. And um, then the final bit is, wait a minute, it stopped hailing. Guys are swimming, guys are sailing. Uh, something, something, gee, that's be better. Mother, father, kindly disregard this letter. It's, it's really good. It's, it's, it's cute and funny. It's like, um, he still does weird stuff. Um, similar vintage. My dad had these vinyl records. It was a collection of an American radio show from the 60s called The Stan Freeberg Show. And he had a, there was a couple albums. So it was a couple of hours of the Stan Freeberg radio show. It was a comedy radio show. Fuck me, I loved some of the stuff. Yes, Mimsy's saying hello for a little bit. She wants to sit on me rather than on her little tower. Um, uh, what are the, the, the great sketches in Stan Freeberg? Um, there's one where he interviews the abominable snowman, which I still think is funny. One where a censor comes in and he tries to uh, sing. And this is hilarious because everyone complains about political correctness now. And, um, oh, you can't say anything. But he tries to sing Old Man River and the censor keeps stopping him. Like, he goes, old man, river. And the guy buzzes and says, um, well, don't say old because some people regard that as a really negative term. We prefer to refer to the elderly. So then he has to sing elderly man, river, the elderly man, river. And it just keeps going. He gets stopped every line by this guy who wants him to. And this is from the 60s. Everyone goes, oh, everything's political. In the 60s, they were joking about how censors wouldn't let them say anything. Justin, your dog says hi to Mimsy. Do you want to say hi to a dog, Mimsy? She's, she's sitting just out of shot here, um, but really wanting me to scratch her head. She likes that. Um, oh, okay, your grandpa recorded Daughter Songs of 360. There was, like, you go right back to the fucking 30s. Um, Famously, ah, oh, some English guy. It's a song about being a window washer and all the things he sees through the windows, you know. And of course, it goes to um, ladies in the bath. Come on, come here where everyone can see you. That's better. Don't point your butt at the camera. That's so undignified. Celeste, my favorite decade is now. Um, I'm not a nostalgic person. I mean, you know, music-wise, I love 80s music, and but I love music now too. Um, I uh, I don't want to go back anywhere. I'm far more interested in the future than in any um, um, past decade. I'm just not a nostalgic. That's it. Oh, Shirazi, that's him. George Formby, when I'm washing windows. Yes. Oh, Gecko, yes, I would love to hear your grandpa's dirty songs. That sounds great. I had this idea, I, I put it I, on Twitter or something. It's, I think it's something I might do. I get some friends to do because uh, when I was watching some of these wacky comedies um, uh, and, and the weird way old sitcoms have really aggressive laugh tracks and then I saw this thing, someone linked it and it was like um, about... Almost 20 years ago, 
David Lynch did this weird web series called Rabbits. That, and, and they were saying that now these days psychologists use these videos to induce existential angst in subjects because they're just so fucking strange. They're like peak David Lynch. They're really weird. And they use this sitcom format and the, with laugh tracks and whatnot, but there's nothing funny happening. It's really weird. And that's what um, put this idea in my head. Because, okay, what, what's, what's a really popular form of memes with millennials and younger? Basically talking about being depressed and suicidal. And I thought, I want to do, a, uh, like, some uh, web videos that are structured like a sitcom, but everyone's basically just saying these depressed, suicidal memes. And... <laughs> It's structured like a sitcom, but everyone's just saying this depressed, suicidal stuff. And laugh tracks kick in every time they they say things. It's like, oh, my God. Senpai, welcome to the work side. Okay. Oh, God, iToy. I remember iToy. I've still, it probably still works, the IT I have. <laughs> just, yes. Older is not necessarily saying Greek theatre was full of sex. And Shakespeare was nothing but sex jokes, dick jokes, genitalia jokes. My personal favourite, um, was it Love's Labour's Lost? It was one of the comedies. As one of those, um, I think it was All's Well That Ends Well. It's the one with the twins and all, it's all mistaken identity and um, whatnot. And... Um, there's one bit where someone's trying to set someone up and there's this real jerk of a character and they're trying to make him think this lady loves him. They're setting him up to uh, look ridiculous. And so they fake a love letter from this lady to her, uh, to him, and he reads it and he falls from it and he's sure it's her handwriting. He's going, I'm sure this is her hand. I recognise her C's, her U's and her T's. And in case you missed it, in case you missed what the joke one of the characters who's eavesdropping repeats the line. Says, just like, did he just say he knows her C, her U, and her T? <laughs> so Shakespeare putting cunt jokes in the middle of a thing. So, yes. Um, if kids at school had good teachers for Shakespeare, they'd love Shakespeare. But almost everyone had bad Shakespeare teachers. I was like, I, in school, I had a bad thing. But I, like I said before, I did a theatre degree when I went to uni and um, I uh, had very good lecturers and tutors for all sorts of things, for Shakespeare, classical theatre. Uh, oh, the lecturer who was into classical Greek theatre was great. He just brought them to life. Um, because you always do the tragedies with Greek theatre. But he had, no, there's comic relief in here. And sometimes people just don't know how to play it. Um, and he ended up, they did a production of one that's like, like all the Greek tragedies, dark as fuck. Um, and it was Antigone. And like all the Greek things, everyone fucking dies. But there's this one bit where, um, uh, a soldier's been sent to um, kill some sellers. Your insomnia is giving up. Get some sleep. Thank you very much for dropping by. Uh, I think a soldier's been told to kill someone and uh, uh, they fail basically and they report back and the general is saying, did you do what I said? And um, the words on the page is very dry. But this guy's director brought out the humour. And the girl who played this role, she, she came across, like she reminded me so much of Eric Idle in Monty Python. Like the general's just saying, did you carry out my orders? And she's, ah, good question. Fairly asked. But did you do it? I know you asked me to do that. That was a good order. And he's going, is it done? Well, I did go out to do that. So I I went there. Did you do it? 
yes, I understand you want to know if it happened. I just want you to know that I heard the order and I went there. And she she was way funnier than I am there. But it was just this whole thing where it's basically a, a general had told a soldier to go and kill someone and they'd fail and they thought they were going to be punished if they admitted. And they're just trying to avoid saying they failed without uh, lying. And it turned it into this whole uh, comedic thing. And um, it was fucking great. I see someone's brought up Jane Austen. I never got into Jane Austen, Justin. Uh, I did have to, and then again, this is probably again the environment. I had to read some Austen for school and I just never got into it. Mind you, um, of, of that whole period of book, the the Austens and the Brontes and uh, whatnot, uh, Mrs. Angry is quite into. So I've watched a lot of adaptations, um, particularly of Pride and Prejudice. I've seen a bunch of different uh, adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. Um, and I do quite like the story of Pride and Prejudice, I have to admit. Gecko, there's a Shakespeare group that does the accents they would have used. That's a bit of guesswork, though, and I know I have read a bit of stuff about people trying to guess how accents would have been at different periods in history. One theory I've heard is that accents and Shakespeare's time would have sounded much more like American accents, like a mid-Atlantic American accent does now. I don't know what they base these on, um, how they try and guess what accents were like at different points. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Justin, the characters in Austen novels, but they, they, they weren't normal humans. They were, they were the 1%, and the 1% moved in very rarefied airs. Like I, uh, when I was in England with my partner, because the family's there, and uh, we visited the uh, historic city of Bath that has the Roman baths in it, uh, which is interesting. But also a lot of the houses from that was in Jane Austen period. And we, we did a tour and the person was explaining because these people didn't work. They were landowners. They, they all their money came uh, from properties they owned. Working was regarded as very, very, very common. Uh, there were no reputable trades. Like, you know, lawyers weren't reputable. Bankers weren't reputable. Um, having to work was not reputable. So these people, their entire day were social engagements and they had to... The dressing thing, like, you know, the ladies had to dress a particular way and it took them ages to get dressed and they had to plan out their day and when they were having someone in and when they were going to someone's place and it's just like oh my god i'm surprised more of them didn't commit suicide this sounds awful just you mr darcy was the, the that version of christian gray yeah maybe i mean there's that famous bit still with um the uh, colin friel's bbc version where for some unknown reason he comes out of the pond with his shirt all wet clinging to his body. That's become a dominant image of Mr. Darcy. Yeah, Miss Fox, occasionally the different, the dominant culture is obviously controlling, but I think also, you know, with traveling the world was, um, going to, you know, colonialism overtaking other people is going to pick up bits of the um, uh, accent. Yeah, Justin, that's what I'd heard, that the British accent used to be like the American accent is now, but who knows? Shirazi, you love those really overdone um, uh, books. Books, Luke's, not Books, Luke's. Yeah, I'm, I'm the the how difficult it was to get dressed in those things. Justin, I am absolutely going to be live streaming on uh, election night. It's going to be a big night. 
Oh, Coffee House, thank you for finding me interesting. <laughs> Shazzy likes the floof. Um, oh my God. <coughs> I just, speaking of like uh, dressing and uh, I've mentioned a few involved Twitter threads. I think I've mentioned this before. There was a really interesting Twitter rant a little while ago. Someone who I think they were in fashion now and they know the history of fashion. And they're talking about how much they hate Bo Brummel because men's fashions used to be really flamboyant. And this one guy who didn't, <laughs> Mimsy's trying to open the door and she's having trouble with it. This one guy who wanted to be part of society but didn't have the money to wear the really flamboyant outfits basically forced fashion into a much more narrow range of acceptable things. It was still quite expensive but not as expensive. And that's why men, from this person's perspective at least, the dominant reason why men's clothing in after for hundreds of years men's clothing was very flamboyant but then in a period of 50 to 100 years it went really uh conservative and really limited the palette of what the majority of heterosexual men would wear and um she blamed it all on beau brummel she hates beau brummel Justin, would I do a live stream to the ULS, US selection? Maybe. How long does it take to get any sort of idea of US elections? I don't know. Justin, do you do a barbecue on election night? Nice. Oh, you know. <laughs> nice. Have my live stream on uh, uh, for your barbecue. Nice. I like it. Mimsy, there's, there's a sliding door there that she can kind of sort of open, but she has trouble with. So all that noise was how long it took her to open the sliding door. Yes, Miss Hoxication, time zones uh, would be a problem. I'd have to work out if that's something I could do. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I yes. I, I, I did do a live stream. Oh, it was funny. The Victorian election, right? Okay, polling closed at six. I thought it'll be a while before we know. I will start the live stream at eight and maybe we'll have an indication by nine of the likely result. Fucking Anthony Green called it at about somewhere between seven and 7.30 um, because it was such a convincing Labour win. Uh that really took me by surprise. So before I even started the live stream, Anthony Green had called the result. Um, so this Saturday night, I'm gonna start at seven because I'm quite convinced we won't have any results by then, um, but we might start to get results about then. So I'm gonna start the live stream at seven. Ah, uh, yes, Ms. Foxcation, seeing Trump fall would be worth a live stream. Uh, is just that um, there's a very big danger he won't um, fall in the next election, which will be really disturbing. Yeah, that would, uh, the, the concept of Trump getting re-elected is very disturbing to me, and it is a disturbingly high possibility that he, he will get re-elected. So, um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> oh, just think, yeah, I don't want to get really sad on a live stream. Uh, yes, Luke, 6.30 for you. Um, so, yes, I don't want to get really... Now, and that's also what I've said. There's, um, while the overwhelming likelihood is Labor wins the election uh, on Saturday night, whether it's a small margin or a bigger margin, that it's overwhelmingly likely uh, that um, Labor will win the election. It is possible that uh, the Libs retain government. And uh, if that happens and I'm doing a live stream, uh, all the Conservatives will get to laugh at me because I'll be super upset. I will not be happy if that happens. 
Uh, and it is possible. It's very unlikely, but it's possible. Oh, God, Justin, electronic voting is the worst fucking thing ever. I work in IT. Uh, electronic voting is the worst fucking idea ever. Uh, it's so open to flaws and uh, 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 hacking and fraudulent results. Uh, electronic voting is literally the worst thing. Absolutely fucking appalling. Uh, no trustworthy audit trail for it. Uh, way too easy to hack the machines. Just the worst fucking idea ever. <laughs> I, I would not be really angry if the LNP won. I'd be really depressed. I'd be really sad. Yes, Justin, your taxes are online and they're super vulnerable, but no one wants to manipulate your taxes, really. I tell you what, I um, one of the real eye-openers that I never really paid that much attention to, but... Years ago, uh, like I was working a temp job in a call center and um, one of the other guys working there had worked as a bank teller for years and based on his first-hand knowledge of how bad bank records were, he, and this was years ago, he kept every receipt every bank transaction and at the end of each month or quarter i think it was monthly he got things he got the bank statement and he had all these receipts and he crossed reference he looked at every single entry on his bank statement and cross-referenced it with a receipt if he didn't have a receipt he was going to question it um and that was just based on his first-hand experience of working as a bank teller and seeing how often the bank fucked up and I was like, oh, that's really disconcerting. Maybe I should do that. But I'm lazy and I don't. I never did and I don't. But, yeah, that was someone who worked in a bank who had no trust whatsoever in their system. And I have to admit, I've worked in the IT systems in banks and they are a little bit terrifying in that they are huge and sprawling and creaky and things have been whacked on and extended way beyond where they should have been extended and it honestly feels like the whole thing is held together with metaphorical blue tack and wishful thinking not even held together with duct tape it's held together with blue tack and it's this big creaking mess that's in constant danger of collapsing and there's a whole army of people desperately trying to prop it up and make sure it doesn't fall over um so yeah i always feel like banks are about five minutes from disaster there are yeah yeah basically over a bank jenga i feel like the banks are five minutes from disaster all the time uh there's just an army of people trying to avoid that disaster um and they're fucking pushing shit uphill, I tell you what. Um, the whole system is dodgy as hell. Yeah, Luke, a lot of businesses still use really old versions of Windows. You, you could easily find places that still use uh, uh, Windows XP. Uh, no two ways about it. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> Byron, um, I'm not sure. That, look, there was a problem. We we first found out there was a big problem with Y2K um, when we realised that there were a lot of systems that were still running on really old programming lang languages like COBOL and other machine languages, and those people weren't in the workforce anymore. <laughs> they had to get a bunch of people out of retirement to uh, um, work on them. But, yeah, it is the danger that they leave some systems for so long that uh, 
everyone who knows the programming language uh, um, leaves the workforce. I do remember reading an article it was in Wired, and I forget when it was. Uh, um, but it was it was titled something like uh, "The Dirty Secret of Big American Companies," uh, and the dirty secret was some of the biggest manufacturers in the US were uh, still using punch cards. <laughs> not any sort of electronic computer, they were using uh, punch cards, which was absolutely wild. And these were like big companies. So uh, uh, they probably don't use them anymore, but this was as recently as 20 years ago. Just you know, the US IRS is using 60s computer technology. Well, I mean, it's just <clears throat> remarkable how quick it changes. Like, you know, the math for the um, moon landing was done on these giant computers that were just like a 90s pocket calculator. Um, and I loved, uh, last time I re-watched on Lord of the Rings DVDs, because also I really loved the extra features, the making of stuff. Um, watch the old Lord of the Rings, like 20 years old now, I thought, oh, these effects hold up pretty well. I've heard some people rag on them, but I think they hold up pretty well, mostly because they mixed up a lot of practical effects with the CG effects. But watching uh, some of the making of stuff with the computer setup they had, they had uh, they were basically some of the most com powerful computers available at the time, and they would upgrade them between movies. Like so, for two years, upgrade them, and they were donating the old ones to one of the New Zealand universities because the computers they had to make the movies were. Um, uh, more advanced than any other computers in the country. But I re I still remember this one guy proudly pointing to a fucking wall of computers, the big fucking tape drives, I think, storage drives, and he's going like, that's a terabyte of storage, and it's a whole fucking room for a terabyte of storage. And terabyte was a crazy big number in the 90s, and they'd spent millions of dollars on this room full of computers that had a terabyte of storage. I can go to Officeworks and get a five terabyte drive that's this big and costs $200. It's like ridiculous how much uh, uh, technology changes. It's absolutely wild. And it still does my head in. But hey, I got obsessed talking about stuff because you people are so much fun to talk to. And it's after 10 o'clock. And look, I was really well behaved and didn't make a cocktail. There you go. Not that I've got anything against cocktails, but I oh know Monday just seems weird. So um, I'm going to go to bed. So I hope you find people uh, look after yourselves um, and um, stay well. Um, uh, try and have um, be at the physio tomorrow night. Try and have a, a, a TFU, um, no, a wank of out on Wednesday. There's a few things I've been thinking about making. Yes, yeah, you people. Nothing wrong with having to be Justin. Um, so, yeah, I'll be out tomorrow. I'll probably have a video up on Wednesday, live stream on Thursday. I'll try and have a video up on Friday and do a live stream on Saturday. Be very busy for the rest of the week. So you all look after yourself um, one and all. I'm going to retire for the evening uh, and I will say bye for now. And 